From time to time, innocent people go to prison, and in some of those occasions, they get sentenced to death. Around 1 in 25 people executed are innocent. Today, I'll show you five people who somehow were proven innocent after their execution. Number 1. Timothy Evans was an Englishman who was tried and executed in March 1950 for the murder of his wife and infant daughter. An official inquiry conducted 16 years later determined that it was Evans' fellow tenant serial killer John Christie who was responsible for the murder. Christie also admitted to the murder of Evans' wife as well as five other women and his own wife. Christie may have murdered other women, judging by the evidence found in his possession at the time of his arrest, but it was never pursued by the police. Evans was possibly pardoned in 1966. The case had prompted the abolition of capital punishment in the UK in 1965. Number 2. Colin Ross was an Australian wine bar owner convicted of the murder of a child which became known as the Gun Alley murder and executed despite the evidence that he was innocent. Following his execution, efforts were made to clear his name but it was not until the 1990s that the key evidence was re-examined using modern forensic techniques, strongly indicating that Ross was innocent. As a result, an appeal for mercy was made to the victorious Chief Justice in 2006, and on 27 May 2008, the Governor of Victoria pardoned Ross in what is believed to be an Australian legal first. Before his execution, his farewell letter to his family, Ross wrote, The day is coming when my innocence will be proved. Ross composed himself with dignity for his quiet but resolute statement from the scaffold. I am now face to face with my maker and I swear by almighty God that I am an innocent man. I never saw the child, I never committed the crime, and I don't know who did. I never confessed to anyone. I ask God to forgive those who have sworn my life away and I pray God to have mercy on my poor darling mother and my family. Ross was executed on 24th April 1922 at Melbourne Gaul in a particularly gruesome manner. Authorities had decided to experiment with a four-stranded rope rather than the usual three-stranded European hemp. The four-stranded rope did not run freely through the noose and Ross did not die immediately because his spinal cord was fractured, not severed. Although his windpipe was torn and obstructed by his destroyed larynx, the condemned man continued with rasping breath and convulsed on the rope. Three times Ross bent his knees and flexed his arms before succumbing slowly strangled to death by asphyxiation. A prison report later ruled that such a rope must never be used again. Number 3. George Stitney A 14-year-old boy was electrocuted in South Carolina in 1944 for the murder of two white girls aged 7 and 11. He was the youngest person executed in the United States. On December 17, 2014, Stitney's conviction was vacated by circuit court judge Carmen Mullen, who cited that as the youth had not received any kind of defense at his trial and his Sixth Amendment rights had been violated. New evidence in court hearing in January 2014 included testimony by Stitney's siblings that he was with them at the time of the murders. Wilfred Hunter, who was in prison with Stitney, testified that the teenager told him he had been made to confess and always maintained his innocence. David Stout based his first novel, Carolina Skeletons, in 1988 on this case. The novel was adapted as a 1991 television movie of the same name. Number 4. Cameron Todd Willingham was an American man who was convicted of murdering his three young children by arson at the family home in Corsicana, Texas. On December 23, 1991, and executed by lethal injection February 17, 2004. On December 23, 1991, a fire destroyed the Willingham family home in Corsicana, Texas. Killed in the fire were Willingham's three daughters. Willingham himself escaped the home with only minor burns. Willingham's then wife and mother of his three daughters was not home at the time as she was out shopping. Prosecutors charged that Willingham set the fire and killed the children in an attempt to cover up for abuse of the girls. However, there was no evidence of child abuse. His wife told prosecutors that he had never abused the children. Our children were spoiled rotten, she said, insisting he would never harm their children. In June 2009, the state of Texas ordered a re-examination of the case. 
in August 2009, 18 years after the fire and five years after Willingham's execution, a report concluded by Dr. Craig Baylor, hired by the Texas Forensic Science Commission to review the case, found that a finding of arson could not be sustained. Baylor said the key testimony from a fire marshal at Willingham's trial was hardly consistent with a scientific mindset and is more characteristic of mystics and physics. An August 2009 Chicago Tribune investigative article concluded, Over the past five years, the Willingham case has been reviewed by nine of the nation's top fire scientists, first for the Tribune, then for the Innocence Project, and now for the Commission. All concluded that the original investigators rely on outdated theories and folklore to justify the determination of arson. The only other evidence of significance against Willingham was twice recanted testimony by another inmate who later admitted he lied on the witness stand in exchange for a prosecutor's help obtaining reduced prison term and financial support from a rich rancher that testified that Willingham had confessed to him. If you want to know more details about this case, you can watch a documentary film, Incendiary, the Willingham case. And also an episode of Law and Order SVU is loosely based on this case. The episode is called Torch and is episode 21 in season 11. Number 5. Jesse Taferro was convicted of murder and executed via electric chair in May 1990 in the state of Florida for the murders of two Florida Highway Patrol officers in February 20, 1976. The officers were killed during a traffic stop for Taferro his girlfriend Sonny Jacobs and their children were passengers. He was convicted with the help of the testimony of his friend who was the driver of the vehicle. The driver, Walter Rhodes, confessed to shooting the officer after Taferro's execution. Later in 1992, the sentencing of Sonny Jacobs, who was also facing death penalty, was overturned. And also the recreation of the crime scene indicated that a third person had committed the murders. Today, Sonny Jacobs is married to a man who was also on death row in Ireland for a crime he didn't commit. A movie was made for cable television about this case called The Exonerated. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.